Datacolor's newest color calibrator doesn't look much different than its predecessor. In fact, the only way you can tell them apart is the X2 moniker on the top and the USB-C connector at the end of the cable. Otherwise, you would easily mistake the two. Both of them have the same white finish, the same tripod mounting threads on one of the three lobes, and the same lens-based sensor style. There is one important hardware difference in here though, which is the actual sensor itself. Now, assuming you get the new Ultra version, you'll have access to the high brightness option in their software, allowing you to calibrate displays with up to 2000 nits of peak brightness. With more and more displays, especially color focused ones, offering increasingly higher brightness levels, especially to aid HDR experiences, having a sensor to measure and calibrate them is rather helpful. To be specific, the Spider X uses a now discontinued sensor from AMS Osrama, an AS7264N. The discontinuation is why I believe Datacolor are offering this new X2 package, and in here is a slightly different but relatively similar sensor, an AS7341 or AS7343, I'm not 100% sure which, but either way, they've moved from a straight XYZ color sensor to one that has a much wider range of wavelengths, but also I imagine requires some more complicated processing of that data in the background. Still, the big highlight here is the much wider supported brightness range of up to 2000 nits. The other change, the USB-C connector, will make it easier to use with more modern Apple devices, and of course anything else with a USB-C port, and does come with a USB Type-C to Type-A adapter in the box, although it's not attached to the cable, so if you're not using this regularly, expect it to go missing, unless you keep it all in the box. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for the hardware differences. On the software fronts, Datacolor have revamped their program with a more modern look and modern UI. It still houses pretty much all of the same features, but in a bit of a, a different look. The primary function, color calibration, is the same process. You tell the software what display you're testing, what type of backlight it has, and what controls you have for your monitor. That bottom brightness function, the high brightness mode, is, as far as I'm aware, the only difference between the Spider X2 Elite and Spider X2 Ultra. The hardware is the same, it's just the software that limits what the tool can do. That does mean that you can upgrade your license. Uh, Datacolor says a, a very affordable way and they brag that you don't need to change hardware, but that also means that something like DisplayCal, once they add support for the Spider X2, you should have full access to the hardware capabilities. Still, in Datacolor software, once you've picked your settings, you can then pick what your calibration settings are too. You can pick what gamma curve you're after, white point, and even brightness. You can also switch between a full calibration, a recalibration, and just a calibration check. And then you stick the Spider X2 on your display, hit go, and let it do its thing. The X2 is noticeably faster per color swatch. It's taking maybe one second per color, with 76 total steps, meaning a full calibration, excluding the setup time, is about a minute. That's a damn sight better than the older Spider 5, which was the sort of leave it and make a cuppa type of tool. This should barely interrupt your workflow basically at all. Once this completes, it requires you to save the profile and set a reminder to recalibrate your display again, with the default being in a month's time. Then it brings you to the preview window, where you can toggle on and off the newly calibrated profile, and possibly more importantly, use the spider tune settings to tweak white points, gamma, and brightness to your liking. Lastly, it gives you a complete report showing you the gamut coverage. In this case, or for this laptop, it's 100% of the DCI-P3 spectrum, which is great to see. Although you do now get a few more options, four actually, REC 2020, ACES-AP1, ACES-AP0, and DaVinci. 
They've also moved the detailed information into this view as well, rather than a separate window, which shows you things like, in my case, the 918.7 nits of peak brightness with the local dimming mode turned off on this Strix Car 16. Uh, review for this in the cards above, by the way, if you're interested. And also things like your white points, RGB XY points, and the gamma values. If you're looking to test your displays, like I very regularly do, the display analysis mode is what you're after. This, sadly, hasn't had the same touch of paint that the main app has. This is exactly the same window settings and the test as the Spider X. Still, with the new high brightness support, you're able to get more accurate readings with displays like this one on the SCAR 16 with a, a mini LED backlight. The Spider X reported around 920 nits of peak brightness uh, with the, the local dimming mode turned on, but the Spider X 2 reported 1315 nits, which is a pretty significant increase with a much higher contrast ratio of 26,940 to 1. It seems that the X2 can measure much lower black levels as well, which aids that contrast ratio reading. As for the gamma coverage, it reads the same, although you now have the option to compare to those extra or the full eight different spectrums rather than the base four in the Spider X. Interestingly, the Spider X2 was able to make sense of the full array local dimming mode during the color accuracy test. The Spider X reported off the charts levels of inaccuracy, whereas the X2 was able to measure a much more reasonable set of results. Actually, now I think about it, I suspect that's down to the brightness limitation if the display is really running at 1,300 nits at that, you know, with a local dimming mode on, that kind of makes some sense. One thing you should know is that neither the Spider X nor Spider X2 officially support calibrating OLED panels. The listing on Datacolor's website makes it clear that they cannot guarantee results using an OLED panel, although you can contact their support if you want to see if your particular OLED should be okay. While I haven't seen any official reasoning for this, my suspicion is that a number of OLED panels, namely LG, use an RGBW pixel layout, that's red, green, blue, and white, which I would imagine could confuse the sensor somewhat, as white light is just a mix of every wavelength. That might throw off some measurements, so instead of listing every display that has an RGBW panel and therefore might not work, they just say a blanket statement that they can't guarantee or don't guarantee results. Still, I think it's something that you should know about before buying. I do feel it's also important to note that beyond the high brightness option and the extra gamuts to compare to, all of this is still the same functionality that you can find in the Spider X. The only thing that's changed is the styling and layout. With that said, the new look is better, although some of the smooth animations, like the option to list what display you're actually using, can be more frustrating than anything, as you have to wait for it to slowly load before entering your information. I have also found that certain features, like the display analysis mode, which I make use of in my monitor reviews, now takes a considerable amount of time to load, to the point where I thought it was just broken or maybe I hadn't clicked on the button to launch it. That's a little disappointing in a tool that costs up to double the previous or outgoing model. Actually, to touch on the price a little more, the Spider X can be had for £120 on Datacolor's own site, at least right now, whereas the lowest price Spider X 2 you can get is £250. The new Ultra version, which again is the same hardware just with an extra option in the software enabled by the now internet activated license key, is £300. That's a hefty price increase. So for the prosumers that would like to calibrate their displays for you know home video and photo editing, you'll either want to pick up a Spider X now before they run out, or look at the myriad of other color calibrators on the market that might suit your needs and price point better. 
if you've got a spider x already unless you find yourself testing high or you know calibrating 800 nits or higher displays regularly you don't need to upgrade but if you fall into the category of money is no object and need to calibrate high brightness displays the x2 ultra looks like it's for you of course with that said those are my thoughts but i would love to hear yours in the comments down below what do you think about the spider x2 and this new ultra version with the high brightness uh, sort of testing abilities let me know in the comments down below if you want to pick one of these up i will leave a link to it in the description if you're interested that'll be a global amazon affiliate link if you want to check that out and if you want to see more videos like this one including more monitor testing laptop testing and a load of other stuff hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon you can also check out plenty of other videos on the end cards if you are interested and otherwise that's pretty much it thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video